Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Archana. I'm from Capri Consulting. I'm your co-presenter for uh, today's uh, webinar. The topic, the topic for today's uh, webinar is Agile versus Traditional Project Management. And our agenda for today's uh, webinar is uh, a brief about uh, traditional project management versus Agile, the pros and cons, and uh, some facts and figures about uh, both the methodologies and what are your options while choosing the right delivery method. And towards the end of the webinar, we'll have a Q&A. But during the webinar, if any of the participants have any queries, feel free to post them on the questions panel. I'd request all the participants to keep their phones uh, on silent mode so that you can make the best of uh, the webinar. And if you have been unmuted uh, uh, to post any question, once you're done with it, I uh, request you to mute your mic back. And the session is being recorded. Uh, the recordings will be shared with all the participants um, within 48 hours of uh, the session. Re just a quick sound test now. Um, request all the participants to just raise your hand uh, if you're able to hear as well. Anybody's having any issue? I'm assuming uh, nobody's having an issue uh, with the sound. Okay, proceeding to the next one. Um, our presenter for today is uh, Krishna Thakur. A few of you all may have uh, met him. Uh, for those of you who uh, haven't met Krishna, he's an agile evangelist. And as you can see, he's uh, certified in a lot of uh, uh, methodologies, uh, PMP, Scrum, and uh, Agile. He's uh, completed his MBA from Manchester Business School in finance. And he comes from an army background uh, from the Indian Air Force. Krishna's got about 20 years of experience uh, spanning various uh, industry sectors. To start with uh, retail, government, transportation, energy, education, defense, banking, and manufacturing. And during these 20 years, he's handled eight transformation projects with some of the major clients like National Express, Centrica, Ministry of Justice, DEFRA, Morrison's, Toyota, Pearson, and Bosch. That's uh, about Krishna. So um, I'll pass it on uh, to Krishna for taking. Hello, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon. How are we doing? I think we are going through a, a big turmoil right now in this country. Uh, hopefully, everyone voted yesterday, and now we are totally confused uh, which party to uh, which who is going to become a, our prime minister, and especially when we are going through Brexit. Well, let's not go into politics. Let's talk about project delivery. Uh, so thanks for joining today and uh, that was a hell of an introduction Archana. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm still learning. Okay. 
So that's what I call Agile. So welcome to today's uh, webinar, and the topic is Waterfall versus Agile. Uh, um, I don't know how many people like this poster uh, showdown. It's not exactly showdown. I just wanted to compare these two methodology. So uh, and uh, they have a place uh, in different kind of a delivery method. Uh, so we won't say this is good or that is bad, but we'll discuss those and then you need to decide which one is better, which one best suited uh, methodology for you. Okay, so with that, let's talk about, uh, I'll try and summarize various project delivery methods which are available in the market or more popular ones. So I won't go into detail of each of them, but I'll give you a very, very high level overview of uh, this methodology. So first one is your traditional sequential methodology, which probably most of us are uh, aware of that, which is called waterfall. Uh, it's funny name, but uh, it, it is kind of a step by step. You'll see why it is called waterfall methodology, but it's a kind of a sequential delivery method. And then uh, PMI, which is a project management institute, came up with a PM book. Uh, I'm assuming that few of you must have heard about that. PM book is basically project management book of knowledge. And it kind of gives you a, a whole framework how the project needs to be delivered. And it's started with, basically started with sequential methodology or uh, waterfall method, but uh, they have adopted very quickly. They've gone and modified and they've given you kind of a structure. They do not prescribe which method you need to use, but they have given a structure. Uh, so slightly modern and slightly better uh, structure. And most of the American organizations follow PMI and PMBOK. Uh, the very few organizations uh, in the UK, I think we are more towards the PRINCE2, uh, which is a project, uh, project in control environment, PRINCE2 uh, methodology, which we follow. So it's pretty much similar to that, and it, ha it has stages. Then the modern, slightly modern methodology of project delivery, which is called the Agile methodology. And uh, so we'll talk in detail about this Agile methodology. It brings agility to your organization, especially when you're in a hyper-competitive environment and you need project to deliver quickly. Uh, so that's why we're talking about this Agile methodology. We'll talk, talk in detail later. Apart from all these three key methodology, there are another one, which is a change management methodology, which is also called as CMM. Uh, I don't know uh, if you remember CMMI uh, one, two, three kind of a ranking we used to do in old organization. The same methodology, uh, which is focuses on change, bringing change to organization. And the one, another one which I would like to discuss here uh, briefly is the process-based methodology. Uh, Six Sigma, Lean, etc. These are the very, very process focused. So anyone dialing here, uh, dialing in here from Bosch, you'll recognize that that uh, whole delivery process follows certain um, uh, certain uh, fine-tuned process so that production can happen very quickly. So these are the five uh, for the today for this showdown. We'll just focus on two methodology, which is a traditional uh, uh, sequential methodology and the agile methodology. So let's let's go and discuss each methodology first, and then probably I'll talk about the benefits and then the problem or drawbacks with the methodology. Uh, uh, and then probably we'll just compare both of them. Uh, and then we'll talk about a few tools uh, later on and a few facts, how they're performing actually in the market. So. Now look at this picture. Uh, you can see there's a waterfall there. There's a kind of a step-by-step -step process. So this is a very traditional approach. Uh, construction industry started using this approach and then slowly software industry adopted because of this. And then even NASA uses this waterfall uh, method when they're uh, sending rocket to uh, space. Uh, so it's a very linear approach to any product development. Uh, I would like to highlight here the reason I'm saying product development because my audience here is mixed so not uh, not everyone is from the software background so there are people attending from manufacturing company as well so um, for the whole webinar we'll just carry on saying product and product can be a software product can be a hardware or product can be a car or anything uh, and so we'll stick to a product terminology uh, okay so in traditional uh, Project delivery method, uh, the first thing you do is uh, you gather requirement, uh, 
And after gathering requirement, you go back and review it with the customer and customer signs it off. Once it's uh, signed off, you move on and give it, hand it over to uh, your technical architects and architects or designers. And they go back and did start designing your product based on the requirements you've given. And uh, once the design is over, pro most probably the business or, or the customer will say, yeah, design looks okay. And then hand it over to a development team. And development of that product starts. Uh, it could be a just manufacturing process. It could be a software development process. Uh, this happens once the product is ready. Uh, it goes through the testing, rigorous testing. And during testing, you find loads of defects. And then you come back and fix those. And once everyone is happy, you get the sign off. And it actually product gets delivered. It's pretty long journey. Pretty long journey. It takes ages to go on from starting from requirement to delivery. But this is how the waterfall method was, and uh, it is still doing that, and it has its own place. Uh, but we'd like to have the benefits of what are the advantages or benefits of or positives of this uh, methodology. There are quite a few. First thing I think is the waterfall is upfront agreement on requirement. So one thing you do is you start talking to customer, customer list all their requirements, and they go into detail of each requirement and then they sign it off, they review it, sign it off. So it's a lengthy process, but then you are you have agreed. You you it's like you know asking a builder to build me a house with a two bedroom and I want the bedroom, the wall color should be this, kitchen fitting should be this, and then there should be car garage and then uh, the back garden, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So you define everything well in advance and then give it to them. So it's good because there's no change of change of scope. And since there's no change of scope, you clearly know what you want to deliver. It's very easy to plan. And the planning becomes easier because then you can work out some kind of a rough estimate of each activity. How long will it take? How much is going to cost? And you plan based on that uh, information. Then since the, everything is very clear, you design that product based on the, your good understanding of the product. Since everything is well planned, well designed, you can easily measure it. So that's a positive side of your uh, waterfall uh, methodology. But then you can actually start measuring everything, whether I have achieved or not achieved. I see a huge problem here uh, with the measurement. What happens is I've, I've seen, I've been project manager and program manager, and we have been masking information. So every time we go to senior management with our RAG report, which is red, amber, and green report, and we always keep showing uh, green because we don't want to uh, tell people that we are in trouble and because we add so much of buffer in our planning. Uh, we add extra budget. We are allow extra time to uh, recover from all those things. So we just keep thinking that, yeah, we might fix it tomorrow and the problem will be okay and we, we'll be back on track. And that's how your measurement goes wrong. So that's a drawback, but we're talking about positives, so let's focus on positives only. The next one is uh, team, team allocation. I think in project, imagine a situation when you start a project, you don't need everyone. All you need is a business analyst uh, to analyze your uh, project and a project manager to manage that project. Once the analysis is over, uh, the business analyst probably will get sign off from the customer and then business analyst hand over this whole requirements uh, document to developers or designer, for example, design next phase is design. So architects will start designing your system. So what happens then the BA or BA can go to a different project and then start working somewhere else. Uh, so that's a positive side. Same thing, architect will design your system and then hand it over to development team and they'll start doing development. And then architect can go away and do start working on some other projects. So you can see there's a resources, resource level goes up and down and is as and when you need and happens. But I see a, a problem as well. So if I need an architect now to come and start designing my system, and that architect might be busy with some other project because that got delayed. So that impact on my project will be, so my project, whole project will get delayed because the art architect is not available to me. But that's a positive side that you can actually um, make use of your resources and you can reallocate to different projects. Uh, another good thing about 
waterfall model is a very low customer involvement. Customer will get involved only at the beginning of the project when they're giving their requirements. And once they have reviewed and signed it off, probably they can go back and they do their day job and they can be busy with something else. So it's a very low customer environment. You don't need them. All, I, all you need, need them is for the milestones or for signing off your product. Uh, so this, this waterfall methodology is suitable for simultaneous and uh, integration with external systems. So imagine you're building two or three different products and then bringing them together and integrating is perfectly fine for this one and and without much of dependency. So it should be independent um, systems you're developing. And then finally, uh, the development, another benefit of this method, I think, is a Development is based on the complete understanding of your requirements. So you understand very clearly. So you do not have any doubts or you do not have any much of questions because it's been answered already and written everything. So you clearly working on very, very clearly well-defined uh, requirements. And uh, so these are the positives of um, waterfall methodology. But as I was discussing uh, the measurement and then dedicated resources and low involvement customer, it comes with a loads of negatives as well. So there's some drawbacks, there's some problem with um, waterfall methodology. So let's talk about few negatives, uh, a few problem or issues with this kind of a methodology. So basically, the first thing is stale requirements. What happens in real life? You capture your requirement, by the time you review and approve, it's three months late because you have documented there'll be a few rounds of review and few rounds of rework and then once it gets approved, it's stale. Okay, and then you go through design, development, testing and delivery. So you see your product after six months or eight months or maybe after one or two years. By the time business has moved on, market has changed. The country has changed. Yesterday there was Theresa May was our Prime Minister and today I'm not sure who's going to be my Prime Minister. So things change very quickly. And once things change quickly, business change, business process change, and then your requirement becomes very stale. So even after delivering this project after two years, as for the requirement, they may not be valid anymore. So that is the problem with this. Your requirements become very old and stale and useless basically. And since you have deliver a product based on the original requirements, but that those requirements have changed now, you have a dissatisfied customer. Customer sees and says, oh my God, I wasted two years and two million pounds and this is what I get, which I can't use now. But they can't go back and blame the development team because obviously that is what the requirement was two years ago, but not now. And that dissatisfaction, waste of money, waste of energy and resources, everything happens. So that's a big drawback I see in this waterfall approach. Uh, if there's a smaller project, which is three to six months, then I can uh, see a predictability. But uh, if it's a larger project where uh, delivery time is one year to two years, I see a huge problem with this. This is an interesting one. Third negative is lack of ownership. Um, I remember my days when I was project manager a uh, long, long, long time ago. And uh, if anything goes wrong with the project, you are to be blamed. Okay, as a project manager, you are blamed for everything. Delays, uh, wrong delivery, uh, uh, wrong allocation of resources, or if you're overspent or, you know, anything happening, you get the blame. And only person who owns this project is the project manager. And never got credit for that. Uh, and uh, everyone says, yeah, I've done my job. So it's kind of a handoff happening. Uh, developers says, I've done my job. Business analyst says, I've done my job. Technical architect says, I've done my job. Uh, business says, I've done my job. It's your responsibility. So only person responsible is the PM. So that's a huge lack of ownership. There's no team working behind him, him or her. So I see that as a, as a massive problem. And as I mentioned, handoff. So this happens. We over the fence. I've completed my analysis. I'll hand it over to design team. Design team does their job. They hand it over to somebody else. So we hand over. We are not collaborating with each other. We're not talking to each other. We just hand off. And when handoffs happen, you become very cautious before taking over something. So there's a big wall, big fence between those two teams happening. 
So you throw, uh, you start playing ping pong basically. So you throw back uh, the document and the document comes back with another answer and there's loads of email goes this side and that side and it gets delayed. High risk. So this is something, you know, since this whole project is going for a long, long, long time, uh, there's a huge risk because we are do, just relying on one big bang delivery at the end of the project life cycle. Okay, so project start date was last year and this year towards the Christmas time, I'm going to deliver. And that is when I'll realize the benefit of my product. So by the time that happens and anything goes wrong during this journey, uh, for example, I've run out of my budget or my CEO has changed or the political party has changed and I don't need this product anymore. Or maybe a new competitor has come into market and they've done better features of the product. And, and I decide to can this project. If I can this project, huge risk. I've lost all my money. And that's why I see this as a very high risk one because there's no place for recovery. So you can't recover. It's a sunk cost, basically. Anything goes wrong with your project. And as mentioned, majority of, I think few of the projects I've done, which are three months and four months kind of thing, they were very, very small project, very tactical projects. Any strategic project, it'll be very long. Uh, it takes six to eight months to one year to two years kind of thing. And it's a very long cycle. And I think the requirements change, market change, process change, people change, everything changes uh, in those period. And it's a long uh, project life cycle, it's not great. Uh, you, you can't keep the same requirement throughout the project. So that is a few problems. So uh, before I move on to the next one, I just want to ask a quick question. Um, how's the pace of this webinar? I'll put some, um, I think somebody has raised hand, so I'll check that. And also I'll put some uh, question, just let me know, uh, so just for a few minutes. Uh, I'll select that and I'll let you that. Uh, so, hang on, let me go back. Um, could you please just let me know by texting on that uh, chat box and, or question box saying that, yeah, it's slow or fast. Sorry, I can't find uh, my question so please let me know if i need to slow down a bit okay thanks cool okay so looks like we are okay all right with speed. Fair enough. And somebody raised hand, so I'll let me quickly check who's raised in. All right, we're fine, I think. Let's move on to next methodology. So, so far, you understand waterfall methodology or sequential methodology. Let's talk about agile methodology. It's a new I don't know how many people have come across this. I think a few of my uh, attendees here have seen Agile and they're working on Agile projects. Uh, so uh, briefly, um, for the understanding of people who have not used Agile, I'll just go through a bit of a detail. So we do exactly same, all the activities same, but in a very, very cyclic and iterative method. So we did the same analysis, we did designing, development, testing, and those kind of things. We did the same thing but in a cyclic, so it, as you see from the picture, it's cyclic, so we do it in a very small cycle. So it's an iterative and team-based approach uh, to any product development. Uh, product, again, as I mentioned, could be software product or could be hardware product or any product. It could be a concept car you're trying to build. Uh, so it basically emphasizes on rapid delivery of a complete functional component. So we're talking about component now. We have not gone for the whole big product. We're talking about the small component of that product. So it's an incremental product or a, a useful increment to the product. And that is what we can try and build. It's very time boxed and focused. So we are talking about time boxing two, two weeks to four weeks. We are not talking about six months or eight months. It's within actually month. You have the time box. So within a month, we expect team to deliver something which is useful to the uh, business. So that is very, very important in this agile methodology. 
and this methodology focuses on delivering the prioritized uh, requirement uh, based on the business value. And uh, the business value is a very uh, critical number or critical uh, figure which we expect the business to come up with that. So if I deliver X, Y, Z, then the value of that is 10 million pounds or two, 200 pounds or something like that. So that business value and whatever delivers the highest business value gets delivered first. So we do not deliver bells and whistles. We just focus on the absolutely must. And it's uh, uh, the product is the, the best part of this uh, methodology is the product is reviewed and evaluated uh, every two, two to four weeks. So you finish one cycle, one iteration, and towards the end, you review this product, provide the feedback, and use the feedback for um, basically uh, improving your product. So if you see the diagrams, I, diagram shows the cyclic one. So you finish one cycle, you go back and review your product, collect your feedback, seek feedback from customer, and you add that feedback into your next cycle of development. So next cycle of development, again, you develop. Third cycle, you develop, you check with your customer. Priorities changes, you change your priority and go and develop that. So you always constantly going back and improving your product. So that's very important. So let's talk about the benefits of this uh, methodology. How are we doing with time? You fine? Okay. And one more thing, which I just wanted to mention that is a high level of customer involvement. Since the cycle is small, you your customer is involved right from the beginning throughout the project and every cycle the customer is involved so i think this is very very important it could be a, a drawback or it could be benefit uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that thing but it needs high level of customer involvement so let's talk about the positives that So as I was saying, it's very, very, we deliver all high value features, high value components, and that's why it is customer focus. So you always focus on what customer wants and then the prioritization or business value is based on your organization's values and all those things. So that is very, very customer focused uh, because we expect people to actually uh, deliver only those things which are going to add value to the whole business. So that is very important. Second thing is beauty about this thing. Since it's a smaller cycle, small iteration, you fail early. You fail fast. The moment you fail fast, you can identify all those problems which are happening with you. It could be a requirement issue, it could be technology issue, it could be just environment, or it could be your tools not right, it could be your team not right, but you fail quickly. Within four weeks, within two weeks, you fail, and that allows you to recover fast. And traditional, if I compare with the traditional, you fail and you don't even notice that you're failing. You notice only after one year, only after six months. It's too late to recover from there. So this is what actually iterative agile methodology allows you to actually fail fast and learn from there. So quickly improve. Then it becomes a product ownership. So whole organization is divided into products. For example, if I'm an insurance company and I sell insurance online, then it's a product one insurance. There may be another product which deals with the claims. There's another uh, a product could be a, uh, deals with all customers CRM kind of system. So you have a very, very vertical and the whole organization divided into products. And so product ownership. So that whole team be, becomes really, really focused on uh, how to deliver this product. So that's the positive about that thing. So it's not like a general project you're delivering and you're cutting across many things. You just focus on one product and then make sure that product gets delivered on time. Uh, if you are in a very hyper competitive market, so for example, um, I sell any I sell online some for mobile phones, for example, yeah, and I'm into competitive market, and I want to introduce new features. So Samsung has come up with a new feature, and iPhone is like lagging behind, and they want to introduce that better quality camera. Very simple example. This allows this particular agile methodology allows you to reduce the time to market because you do in a small iteration, you just add new feature quickly and quickly go into market. You don't wait for the whole bunch of features and delivery. So if you remember uh, olden days when Microsoft used to have a, a big new release one year and two years time, here you can just quickly do make changes, 
look at the competitors if they are doing something and if you need to do something you make changes and quickly go back to market so it reduces time to market i'm not saying reducing time to market means you go with all the features you go to market with essential features absolutely must features so that's the and it's you user focused so throughout the life cycle every iteration user will get involved with the end product and the user can actually guide that product or it's guide its path to a final destination because the end user can use it, provide feedback. And it could be negative, it could be positive feedback, and it could be after a few sprints you realize that the product is not going to launch the market or not going to make any profit, then you can stop. But it's user focus. Actually, you deliver a right product because user gets involved. So these are a few positives. Very few positives. There are hundreds of positives I can count. Uh, the very very uh, key things as compared to uh, waterfall model. Issues, yes, I'm not saying it's like everything is silver bullet here uh, and uh, Agile is going to fix every problem. It's got its own problems and uh, it's got its own place. So I think let's talk about a few negatives here. And first thing I see here is a high degree of customer involvement. You need to have customer involved 100% throughout the life cycle of your project. And uh, the places where customer can't spare time to get the product delivered, I think this is not the right, right methodology for them. Uh, they need to have commitment. So uh, that's a negative point. Uh, I see because these kind of projects won't succeed if the customer is not involved on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so if you see a scenario where customer can give their requirements and go away and do their job, then this is not right methodology. Second thing is, is important, very important I've seen. I can go into detail of this uh, a bit later if you want. Um, it works only for dedicated project team. We want high performing dedicated people for this. So should be highly skilled, cross-functional, working in a team. I cannot leave, you know, it's like a, a moving goalpost. So during the whole project life cycle, this team is fixed because it uh, works on team dynamics. We build a very high performing team by doing various practices and we expect them whole team to deliver on that product and deliver that product. So it works in that scenario. If in your organization, uh, for example, DBA works on 10 different uh, places, your UX designer works in five different projects, then probably this is not the right uh, methodology because we want people to be dedicated. Uh, but there's exception, there are exception. Uh, I'll give an uh, example for Bosch here. Uh, I think the few attendees are from Bosch. Um, simple example, when we were delivering the first project, uh, we saw uh, there were people coming from manufacturing, people coming from purchase department. Initially, there was no dedication. They will say, yeah, we don't have any work right now. Uh, we don't want to come here to your meetings. We don't want to hear what you're doing. And we kind of was struggling with that. Slowly, they understood the value of, you know, doing things together and then uh, we saw suddenly manufacturing risk team and then uh, purchase team got involved in the project and things started moving very quickly so every time we ordered a sample there was a purchase representative with us and they said yeah i can do that thing quickly and or if there's an issue they'll highlight the issue immediately so that was the kind of thing needs to happen but if you do not have a dedicated team then it's a problem Next is time boxing and frequent prioritization. So all the time, constantly, your customer needs to sit there and prioritize their requirement. So uh, this could be an extra work for them. And at the same time, bo time boxing. So I'm, for example, if I'm doing a, I'll give you both example. If I'm building a component which is a large and I need third party supplier to provide me something or similar situation where I'm building a software uh, where the Scots product is being used and uh, I'm relying on a uh, development team sitting in Romania. And that, there I think time boxing could be a problem or maybe a, a SAP kind of a project where there's a big module and which cannot be divided into a smaller chunk, then you cannot deliver something useful in two to four weeks. And this is not suitable for that. So that's the negative part. Uh, but I think most of the technology now uh, going to more component or more modular approach and I think this can be adopted easily. But yeah, this is a problem. You have to time box it. You have to prioritize on a daily basis, on a weekly basis rather. Um, 
another problem i see it's a, it's a positive for me but it's some people see co location or dedicated team uh, when the organizations are trying to save cost they are outsourcing their projects to different countries and that makes project distributed actually so half the team will be in here customer side and then half of the team doing development somewhere else but if you look at last 5 to 10 years i think 10 years ago we were doing outsourcing so much of outsourcing and suddenly people started realizing that no we need to near uh, need to be near the customer and that's when the whole development started coming back uh, in house and most of the organization now coming back in house so you can see the difference why it worked why it didn't work so i think only negative i see here is a yeah team needs to be co located and a dedicated team uh also i think this because of uh, we are working just in time very short narrow focused there are chances that you may need to do a refactoring of work you doing or rework required so you do something you get the feedback requirement still fluid and you need to go back and rework uh, and people see this as problem quite a few have seen i've seen my team they say oh my god i need to go and why you keep changing your requirements and uh, i think the only argument i can give you are that people change mind and things change so we should be prepared to you know go and refactor or rework on our product because we are going to deliver the right product when we finish and that's the thing uh, but this can be seen as a negative but hey ho that's how agile works uh, so a very nice infographic one of my team members have produced uh, so we just kind of tried uh, listed both sides uh hopefully you can see on this on the screen uh so basically pros and cons of uh, waterfall methodology and agile methodology so we compared that um waterfall is suitable for well discipline situation is a positive very very well disciplined and we deliver step by step uh complete requirements and then we have well defined phases well stages and all those phases happening one by one cons are uh basically early feedback is missing you don't get any feedback from team they get feedback only at the end of project any changes to uh, any response sorry any changes a response is very slow so it takes ages to respond because there is a, a whole process of cr which is called change request uh, change request process and change request process needs to go through analysis then needs to go through estimation process and then somebody needs to approve that and say yeah go ahead and do spend another 20k for changes it takes time to uh, include changes in your project and um, one thing uh, you cannot capture all the requirement you cannot imagine every possible requirement of your product and you miss out on that if you miss out on that your scope has been well defined you've been a budget has been approved there's a high risk if you identify any missing requirement cost is very high because you've already moved on you need to go through the change process so let's compare as compared to that let's compare agile methodology which is iterative and uh, flexible uh focuses more on customer collaboration so basically customer is involved all the time and uh, we talking to customer basically i've seen product owners they call customer product owners sitting next to you and talking to you on a daily basis uh it's very interactive as i mentioned that they are working closely and at the end of uh, each cycle you have either working product or working software uh, apologies for uh, this slide says uh, working software but uh, are we talking about working product here uh, so it could be software or product also it focuses on fast delivery okay um so we want actually every 4 to 5 weeks there should be something which is useful for uh, as well uh only problem i see people hate this or people enjoy actually doing is a lack of documentation they stop documenting things uh, i remember my days uh, as a prince two project manager in dwp uh, and i used to document everything you know hundreds of pages of document which nobody read and i spent my whole life producing those documentation uh, agile kind of uh, encourages you to reduce that documentation and says okay whatever is needed just do it just bare minimum documentation 
uh, occasionally people misunderstand that and misuse this uh, concept and they stop documenting things which are essential so it, that's a problem but i think that can be fixed uh, by training and emphasizing on the importance of documentation um, since it's just in time and we're talking about very small feature small uh, component or small uh, functionality a design could be limited to that small area and it people think that it doesn't think of the whole design but there are work around there uh, you can actually have the rough idea of the whole overall design and then start focusing on the smaller portion of the design uh, especially in software industry i'll give you an example of data warehousing project and uh, the, everything was fine up to staging anyone from data warehouse um, project here uh, they can recognize what i'm saying uh, so the whole database foundation everything was collected uh, first the staging area but the moment we started into entity uh, or etl process uh, the whole team started designing the whole etl process whereas i kept on telling people that yeah focus on just one thin slice and they did not understand the requirement same thing with the manufacturing if i'm building a car and if you start building the whole car because oh no i need this whole chassis and i need the whole thing well designed it doesn't work in that situation because we think about having a small design of the component when it, uh, it integrates with something it's other other component you may need to go and rework on the design so yes uh, it's difficult to get the whole great design um and also uh, goals are a bit unclear because we start working based on our own understanding uh, currently we don't wait for the whole requirement to uh, mature uh, whatever you know today start working on that and explore and that's kind of approach it could be negative for other people and very difficult since you don't know the whole requirement in great detail it's very difficult to estimate your effort and and that is what another negative people you see but there are way around to go and estimate your effort uh, but mainly if the senior manager or your chief finance officer says okay how many millions for this project how many man uh, man days is difficult to give that kind of a number and i think the mindset of the senior management still there they still think that yeah they you need to come up with that number and give them a rough idea because then they can budget for next year so it's it's negative for few people but there are way of uh, dealing with this kind of a situation so we'll talk about that later on uh, i think uh, i think the next webinar we planned is dealing with this, the common problem with uh, agile so if you are attending next webinar probably i'll be answering those uh, question anyway so moving on to comparison is the showdown starts <laughs> okay interesting part so i'll try to compare uh, but uh, let me know if you have few more points to add to this so for easy understanding i've just drawn this two uh, icons um, yesterday uh, so which will give you a kind of a waterfall approach sequential traditional and the agile is a more iterative circular one so as i mentioned it's a sequential process and agile is iterative process and we do the pretty much same thing what waterfall does but in a smaller cycle so values wise one thing we understand as the comparison the waterfall thinks about the process and tools very very important for them whereas uh, in agile we focus on uh, individuals interaction collaboration etc so that's focus is slightly different um similarly uh, i think the waterfall or traditional sequential uh, methodology focuses on comprehensive documentation because there's a hands off you need to sign off you need to review and all those things so that encourages people to write a documentation so that they can cover their back basically uh, that's the idea oh did i miss any requirement and you keep writing all those things so it becomes very very comprehensive uh, whereas uh, what we believe uh, what agile believes in is basically working product very important that every four, two to four weeks we deliver something which is useful for you and that is a focus and documentation can happen later on something like that and uh, as i say ha ha handoffs happening contract negotiation happens in case of a waterfall uh, you ask them to sign off so you say yeah for this money i am going to deliver this 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 uh, for 20000 pounds i'll deliver two sorry 
it could be 200 1000 <laughs> but that's kind of thing contact negotiation happen but where is in agile it's a more customer collaboration we don't talk about how much money you're spending we talk about what do you want and okay let's build something nice together so that's a collaboration value wise so that is a value um and waterfall you follow the plan it's very very important that you follow plan because you've done the upfront requirement and you've done based on requirement you've done upfront planning and you follow that plan because that is how your success is measured whereas in agile it's all about responding to change you scenario changes market changes people changes process change to tools change and you respond to them quickly and uh, so that's kind of a value uh, between these two methodology now let's talk about simple process uh, just to conceptualize uh, just to understand this thing imagine the first picture on my uh, my left hand side waterfall process uh, it's person is trying to deliver something a very very chunky very big project so this project has got so big that i'm sure uh, i'm not sure if i'll be able to deliver it so it's, it's so massive what agile does is a, it divides into a very small doable chunk or bite size kind of a section of uh, your problem area and then bite size becomes very easy and uh, that's what we do at home also uh, if we are revising my son is revising for example for example he decide that yeah i'll do this chapter today and next chapter after and it becomes much easier actually to uh, achieve that yeah you can't try and finish the whole book in one sitting so you need to divide that and same applies to any project. Uh, so process wise also, uh, if you see, you can easily deliver that and it becomes much easier. Delivery, so let's com compare delivery. So this is a very typic typical process and uh, you must have seen this diagram in various places. I use this thing. In a traditional or waterfall or sequential project management, you do requirement gathering, which as mentioned, then you analyze your requirements, design your product, once you've designed the product, you develop it. Once you develop, test it. And then after a bit of a rework, you deliver that thing. And towards the end, there's a building up, building the product right. So you deliver a product which was captured six months ago or one year ago, based on that requirement. You've not changed anything. So that based on that. What Agile does is it takes the small cycle. And after a few, it releases the small increment of the product. Again. It goes to another few cycle of that and says, yeah, I can release uh, another increment of the product. So they go and increment another. Same thing, they get the feedback. After feedback, they modify that thing and deliver another product. So what is happening is actually uh, they're releasing small increment and also capturing the requirement and also capturing the feedback of the product. So it's all the time is products being refined as, as we go along. Whereas in the, the first case, traditional project, whatever was captured a month ago or six months ago or one year ago gets delivered right at the end after two years or whatever time but whereas in agile you can see there's a increment happening and towards the end what you do is actually you build the right product so that is the difference building the product right and building the right product that is the difference you keep deliver something which is useful for the end and use so that is a delivery uh, difference between uh, these two methodology there's something for uh, people who love graphs uh, I know uh, facts and figures people enjoy seeing uh, look at that and it's very convincing as well at the same time so let's compare uh, two methods one is waterfall another agile and we're talking about delivering the value over the period of time and we also see that how how risky it is so what happens in waterfall after one year or six month or one year you deliver a value right big bang approach or what happens your risk goes up as you go delay for example anything happen after three four maybe if i'm saying seeing this scale as a one year scale after eight months something goes wrong then there's a massive risk and you lose everything but whereas in agile you deliver small value you deliver another small you just keep incrementing the values keep incrementing. as you go and increment the value you're actually reducing the risk because you've already delivered something useful to your customer. So anything stops after six months, you still have delivered some value, some useful product to them. Very simple example. And uh, I just, I keep doing my training. I give this example to people. Let's imagine you're building a house. 
and you give the requirement I need to have a double storied building and a house with a living room and the kitchen the ground floor and two bedroom up top and then toilet one toilet downstairs one and you give this requirement to and the builder says yes okay go away give your 200k to me and I'll build this house and then you come back after one year and you realize he's built something else and because you were not involved throughout the project life cycle you don't know what he was building it's high risky in case of agile what will happen he'll say yeah okay let me build one room for you so you can leave your rented house come and move to this one room I'll build a kitchen next to it and then you have an incremental product so you get one one bedroom where you can just come and move in uh, and then you build a kitchen next to it and then you start cooking and then they start building uh, bedroom and then convert the ground floor bedroom to living room and so you his, his cons the builder is constantly delivering you some value and you are using that uh, so one very good example of you know ROI kind of thing I keep giving uh, unfortunately I do not have that slide here but it's it's a you reinvest actually that money uh, what you're doing in agile so that's kind of a difference you have so uh, this is one good, good example uh, anyone plays rugby here uh, my son plays rugby and I realized this thing and that's how name scrum comes off so if you see Olympics where runners uh, relay race runners are running and then handing off a button to each other and if you accidentally drop one then you lose and uh, though it's a team uh, team effort between four runners but one runner does his job and if the third runner is slow then you might lose that whole race and so that is a kind of a waterfall situation when you hand off to other people and then that other team might delay your project completely whereas in rugby is a team effort whole team gets involved together they just pass ball to each other and then move and score a goal uh, score a try uh, so that's kind of a analogy I'm using here uh, to demonstrate how the project work so let's we compare those two so uh, but I think I need to prove that with the numbers and uh, this is something uh, uh, there's a kiosk report uh, every year has been produced since last uh, since 1995 every six months they collect all the data for agile projects and waterfall projects uh, various sizes uh, small medium and large projects so uh, there's a wide range of project uh, they cover and they carry on doing survey and based on the survey this is this is the average result so success rate for agile projects are 39 percent and 11 percent for waterfall model uh, again you can define your success criteria I think uh, Waterfall, model, uh, waterfall projects is success criteria deliver on time within budget they don't care whether you deliver the right product or not so their success criteria is different whereas agile focuses on okay how I deliver the right product is it useful to my end users is it bringing money to my organization or not so those kind of a uh, mindset slightly different mindset so uh, it's 39 percent agile projects succeed in their project uh, the challenge means difficulties in delivering and all those things so uh, based on data uh, collected over the last 20 years nearly 20 years um, people collected 52 percent uh, agile project being challenged and this is mainly because agile helps you to identify problem earlier on so you fail early and you identify those things okay so and 60% of waterfall failed, so it's slightly half, more uh, number of projects failed. Only 9% project fail, and that's 29%. So it's three times more waterfall project fail. So that's a success rate uh, for you. Um, so going back, so now the biggest question you ask is, okay, how do you choose which methodology you should use? So it's very important to choose the right methodology. So I'll give you a few tricks and uh, this one. Uh, I'm, I'll skip this one. No, I won't skip, but I'll talk about what factors would you consider choosing a delivery method. So you need to consider a few things uh, before you decide that yeah, whether um, you go for agile or uh, sequential uh, method. So uh, ignore that one. Uh, or yes, let's spend quick one minute. If you can say what factors you're going to use and type it in the chat box, please. Just quick one minute.
anyone selecting project anyone typing now okay so let's move on uh, move on to the next slide uh, see if okay while i'm talking probably you can type the factors okay so i'll move on because i'm cautious of time as well um so choose the right methodology so basically uh, how you choose if a customer availability if it's high throughout the project then choose go for agile if it's initially and then every milestone then uh, waterfall is the better model for you uh, scope and features agile things change is good but if you have a, everything fixed change is bad then stick to your waterfall so that is the one way of doing that feature priorities if your customer is ready to uh, prioritize regularly and deliver the value by priority then it's great otherwise uh, if a customer is saying give me everything then as a waterfall is much better because you have to deliver everything okay team if you have a co-located small and de uh, dedicated team then must go for agile if the coordination limited to hands off point then stick to your uh, waterfall model funding uh, i think for time and material best suited is agile and if it's a risky one fixed price yes go for that uh, go for uh, waterfall model location wise co-located team and it can be distributed in case of a, a methodology but very simple uh, tool I just uh, Stacy metrics I'll before we finish this uh, webinar I'll talk about Stacy metrics Stacy metrics is the one which is you know if you see xsx uh, x axis uh, this is a requirement so uh, right at the bottom is a close to agreement where the requirements are well matured and you understand very clearly and if you go upward, uh, it's a far from agreement. So it's a very vague requirement. Similarly, technology-wise, if your technology is close to certainty, you have tested it, you have used it, then great. And towards the right uh, is your far from certainty. And the people, if you look at that. So if it's the core area where the requirements are OK and your technology is right, then it's a very simple project. And moment technology is new and then requirement is okay becomes slightly complicated S similarly xx is if the technology is okay but the requirements are vague then becomes complicated if you move towards outward where the technology is unknown uh, and then in agreement is also a bit vague then it becomes a bit complex but if everything is you know there's no clear requirement there's no clear technology uh, blueprint uh, and you don't know where to go then it's chaotic so in this situation i'll just overlay another one is the waterfall people suggest the waterfall is the best one where you know everything very clearly and you can deliver using that and from there you start using agile in complex area you start using the um, for even for uh, complicated and complex and if it's something is unknown that's neither but i seriously doubt this stacy uh, metrics and i think it's more biased towards agile so I did some comparison. So a slightly different model is this one, which I think either can be used in case of um, whether technology and uh, requirements are clear. Agile can be used. Waterfall can be used. Uh, if the technology is stable, you know everything, and requirements are not there, then probably you can spend time in gathering requirement, understanding that, and waterfall can be suitable there. But other way around if you're experimenting with your technology then go for agile and if nothing is clear requirement not clear technology no one can help so agile won't work waterfall won't work so just avoid those kind of projects so that is a kind of a slightly modified stacy matrix uh, so now i'll i'm open for questions so if you have any questions you can i if you want i can unmute you and then you can ask so raise your hand and then please ask questions and I'm here to answer. Anyone questions? Matt. Uh, 
Okay, can you project be, can the project be delivered in stages? Uh, Matt, good question. Uh, can the project be delivered in stages? Is that the right question? Yes, so we, and especially in Agile, uh, that is what we believe in, stages, stage delivery. So we deliver set of features first, and uh, then we deliver another set of features, and then uh, we keep on incrementing. Whereas in uh, waterfall methodology is just last stage. That is when they actually uh, you get the uh, project. Okay, Aditya, you have asked a question. Feedback from customer. Uh, yeah, and uh, you do get feedback uh, from customer for Agile method as well, uh, sorry, for uh, waterfall model as well, uh, but um, it's it takes ages. By the time you get the feedback, it's too late because you've gone through the whole project life cycle, you've done the requirement, designing, development, testing, and everything. Anything feedback you get and say, yeah, uh, can you change this thing, change is no, not good. So that's why we avoid, but uh, feedback from customer in case of Agile, it's every four weeks you get feedback. Every two weeks or four weeks you get feedback and you can actually incorporate that feedback into your product. So you deliver that product correctly. Uh, any other question I have? Sorry, my mouse. Okay, so can't see uh, any other question. Can I all feedback from customer? Okay, good speed, thank you. Uh, it's okay for me. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, so any one of you, if you're uh, planning to adopt Agile or anything, uh, what we do is this, don't just follow because we need to follow Agile and uh, always recommend people that uh, it should be right product and there are higher chances of succeeding uh, actually in adop uh, adoption. So I tend to ask uh, question, various question uh, things like, you know, a uh, key thing I always focus on people, process and tools and uh, what sort of, what kind of a support you have from management and how enthusiastic your team is. So there are easy questionnaire and you can, you can download from our website uh, I've given a link here and when I share your slides, probably you can take the link from there and download that questionnaire. And if you're trying to adopt Agile in your organization, just go and check. It's a simple audit, uh, which helps you to identify whether there's the right methodology or not. Uh, because I'll, in my situation also, in, we started blindly adopting Agile and then we realized now it's the wrong place. And uh, we learn from there. So that's something there. Uh, with that, I would say thank you to all. Somebody raised hand. I'll think, quickly see what is it. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Uh, okay. But uh, Matt, could you retype your question, please? Yes, okay, now I got your question, understand that, yeah. Uh, I think you're saying uh, Agile project, is that a requirement delivering stages? No, it's not a requirement. As long as your product is ready and uh, it's useful, uh, you can actually keep adding new increment and then you can do a big bang delivery. Uh, it's up to you, so that's perfectly fine. Okay, thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, I'll quickly show, uh, uh, thanks for uh, attending this webinar. Please follow us on uh, various social media, uh, Twitter, YouTube, we have Facebook, we have LinkedIn, and uh, you'll get 10% uh, discount uh, voucher once you follow us or like us on uh, social network. So once again, thank you very much. And we have another webinar planned on Monday, which is talking about uh, common issues with Agile and how to uh, deal with those issues. So please uh, join us uh, for the next webinar. And I, once again, Thanks a lot from all the team members here and Capital Consulting. Have a good evening and have a good uh, weekend. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.